Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The International Space Station, or the ISS, is the largest man-made object in space. It is 109 meters wide and 73 meters long, bigger than the Boeing 747. It is also the most expensive spacefaring object at a whopping $150 billion. The ISS isn't the first nor the only space station in the Earth orbit. In the early 1970s, the US and the Russians launched a series of space stations. The Russians had the Mir, and the Salyut space stations, while the Americans had the Skylab space stations. But these were deorbited as they became inoperable. Currently, Tiagong 2 from the Chinese National Space Administration is the only other space station in orbit around the Earth. The ISS is different from early space stations like Skylab and the Salyut. It is called a modular design space station. Well, what's the difference? The early space stations were called the monolithic designs. This was because the entire space station was carried to a low Earth orbit with the help of a powerful rocket. In the case of the Skylab, it was a Saturn V, and in case of the Salyut, it was a Proton K rockets. But the ISS was not built in this manner. It took the international community over 40 expeditions and a time span of 20 plus years to fully complete the construction of the International Space Station. The most interesting part of this is that the ISS is still not fully completed as of today. This brings us to the main part of our video, the orbit path of the space station. Majority of the modules of the ISS were built with the help of the space shuttles launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida. So the most optimal orbit inclination for the ISS would be 28 degrees from the equator, which is the latitude of Cape Canaveral. But the ISS is at an orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees. Although majority construction of the ISS was carried out by the Americans, the Russians contributed many modules too. The Russians normally launched their rockets from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. This was because Baikonur was the closest to the equator. Whenever launching a rocket from the Earth, it is easier and also much more efficient to reach orbit with the original inclination of the launch site. This is why many American satellites have an orbital inclination of 28 degrees as they are launched from Cape Canaveral and many Indian satellites have orbital inclinations of 14 degrees which is the latitude of Sri Harikota. If you look up Baikonur in the map, you'll notice that the location is at a latitude of 46 degrees. So why did they launch the ISS at 56 degrees? Rockets are normally launched in the direction of Earth's rotation as they get a small boost to their velocity because of this rotation. Sometimes rockets fail on the ascent. Should that happen, the rockets from Baikonur would fall in China. So to avoid rockets falling in other countries' territory and cause unnecessary problems, it is better to avoid flying over the country and take a different ascent path. But at this inclination, the orbit looks as if it never passes through North America, right? Well, this is just a single orbit of the ISS. It takes the ISS about 90 minutes to fly once around the Earth. During that 90 minutes, the Earth has rotated about 22.5 degrees. So if it flew over a city in one orbit, that city won't be there for the next orbit. If you watch NASA TV, you'll see a map that looks a bit like this one. This map shows us about five orbits of the space station, but the shape of the map and the orbits look a bit confusing. It makes it look like the ISS is changing its direction mid-flight, isn't it? Well, it looks this way because we're looking at a map on a flat surface instead of on a globe. When we take in the rotation of the Earth and the orbital position of the space station, the map will look different. If we plot many orbits of the ISS on the globe, it will look like this. Another interesting fact is that the ISS loses an altitude of about 100 meters every day. Even though the ISS is at a very high altitude above the Earth, small traces of extremely light gases like helium and hydrogen are present at this altitude. Hence, it still undergoes aerodynamic drag, which results in a loss of kinetic energy. To get back on the right track, ISS must correct its course through regular boosts. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Until the next one, bye.